Hello everyone, my name is Maggie Cole and for my final I interviewed my mom who is an 8th grade math teacher at an urban school district in central New York. So one of her students who we will call Oscar um, who this action plan is on was an 8th grader at the time. Um, he was 14 years old, male, Hispanic, and came from a low socioeconomic status household. Um, at home, he was the only child, and his mom was in prison during the time um, of these events, and his dad was not very supportive. Um, his dad also dealt with substance abuse, with alcohol and drugs, so Oscar was exposed to that at home as well. Um, I would describe the parenting as indifferent. Um, it was definitely low demandingness and low responsiveness, which I will get more into later. But one example would be Oscar could go to a friend's house after school, not come home the night, stay the night there, not check in with dad, and it would just be okay, and dad wouldn't be worried where he is or any of that. As far as school goes for Oscar, he was a really smart student and had the ability um, to do really well in school. Um, he just had a lot of outside factors that were affecting that. So in sixth and seventh grade, he actually was in accelerated math. And then to the start of eighth grade, he was in algebra one and earth science, which are both high school level courses in eighth grade. Um, and he was in those courses without meeting the criteria to be in them. So he was kind of pushed in because the school knew that he was capable of being successful in them and didn't want outside factors to play a role in whether or not he would be in them. Um, another reason that he struggled with school was due to being absent frequently. Um, he would get more and more behind in classes due to this. So um, that is why he struggled so much, even though he was capable and had the ability. As far as Oscar's personality and social life, um, he was a very social and easygoing guy. Um, he was known as the class clown and popular. Um, he was just goofy, described as having good attitude at school, funny, very loyal to his friends. Um, he was never disruptive in classes. He was um, never seemed angry or anything at school, just always seemed really happy. And then he wasn't a part of any sports or clubs or anything, so most of his time outside of school was unstructured leisure time, where he was hanging with friends, going to the skate park, doing things like that um, outside of school. So during eighth grade, when this was set, Oscar was having a really hard time connecting with his teachers, being engaged in class, and um, really trying to see the point in school. And like I said before, he wasn't rude or anything. He just joked around a lot, which kind of was disruptive in class, making jokes and things like that. Um, but he never like blew up or got angry or upset. And another reason that I touched on earlier, he struggled because he was missing so many days and that just put him far back. Um, the grade level team met together and tried to discuss ways to help him be successful in school. They tried um, a couple times to set up parent-teacher conferences with dad. Um, he would confirm and then not show up. They tried to call home, email home, but they just could not reach him or get a response from dad. So they knew as um, a team they had to kind of come up with a way to help Oscar be successful even without the support at home. So the change that the grade level team and counselors decided to do was to actually take him out of the Algebra 1 and Earth Science classes. So due to absences, he was failing these classes and he was just falling farther and farther behind. And it was almost as if he was constantly trying to play catch up um, to be where the rest of the class was and this was just creating more and more stress for him. So after this change, he got moved back into grade level math and science. Um, everything changed about his demeanor at school. Um, his confidence grew. He was um, able to really grow so much. He became 
like a class leader and group leader. He loved working with others and talking to them about the topics that were discussed in class. And it really just allowed him to bring back that social part of his life and grow his confidence. Um, and because he was such a social kid, I think this was really important for him. And then on top of that, while he was doing better in classes, it really allowed him to connect more with his teachers due to the engagement in classes. And I think this was very important step for him as well. So by the end of eighth grade, his home life was still rough. He still missed school frequently. That didn't ever really change. But the change of taking him out of those higher level courses and allowing him to prosper in the grade level ones really helped him not only connect with his teachers, but be in a good place academic wise for going into the high school. So I think having that supportive system of adults um, added in was one of the biggest things that um, helped him become successful. All right, so now that we have gone through the story of Oscar in eighth grade, um, I'm going to talk about my action plan. I kind of split this up into a couple different topics. So the first one I want to look at is the parenting style. So I touched on this earlier that um, I think their Oscar's parents' parenting style was indifferent, um, very low responsiveness and low demandingness. Um, we read a lot about parenting styles in our textbook and a few of the phrases I took out that I think apply here would be poor or little communication, not monitoring or supervising the adolescent's behaviors, and being detached, distance, distant, withdrawn, and absent. So I think all of those things are characteristics that describe Oscar's parents and why I think that their parenting style was indifferent. So knowing that that's the parenting style, I think it's important for us to know how that can affect the adolescent. And in our textbook, I grabbed this quote that said, sometimes indifferent parents can be aloof to the point of being neglectful. So this is why it's important for us to understand that that's the parenting style and that this adolescent might not be getting everything they need from an adult at home. So I think that knowing that as teachers um, will help us support um, the adolescent more. The next part I wanted to focus on was um, the socioeconomic status piece. So I mentioned earlier that um, Oscar lived in a poor household um, and we talked a lot about how this can affect a student academically and a few things um, of how it can affect it is it can diminish their sense of mastery and academic and interpersonal problems. So the financial strain I think that a family can face really um, plays a part in the parent and child relationship and I think that's what might have happened here is that that was a part of the reason why that relationship was so strained. And then another thing was from the Zing reading on identity. Um, one thing they talked about was an academic focused identity. So a child being able to understand who they are academically and identify themselves that way was really important. And I think when Oscar was in those higher level courses like Algebra 1 and Earth Science, he probably struggled with um, having an academic identity, didn't really know where he belonged in those courses. Whereas once they were able to take him out of those courses, um, it kind of allowed him to see who he was academically and allowed him to build that identity. Um, and then another thing from that same article that I thought kind of applied to here was the My Brother's Keeper, which was during the um, President Obama's administration. It was a program that emphasized the importance of like supportive adults in adolescents' lives, and it focused mainly on African American and Latino young men. Um, I know at my school this year we have a few students who have mentors or people who help them with assignments, help check in with them on an emotional level, all those things, and are just there to support them. 
So I think if this was available, a program like this would have been really beneficial to Oscar because Oscar didn't really have that supportive adult outside of his teachers and people right at school that he could go to for help or that could make sure he's staying on task and going to school and doing homework and all those things. So I think this is one thing that maybe could have been done to help Oscar even more at school. The next part I want to look at is about the stress adapted students. So we read in the Ellis 2017 article about these students who are at high risk and how this affects them. And then one point I want to focus on is how um, some of these students, even coming from high risk backgrounds, can still thrive and, as they said, beat the odds and be successful even without that support. Um, from home. And a few of the major predictors of if a student will be successful is intelligence and problem solving skills, close relationships with capable adults, and close friends. So I think going into eighth grade, deep down Oscar really did have the intelligence and problem solving skills and those that close friends aspect. And then throughout the year when he was able to build those relationships with his teachers, he was able to add in that close relationships with capable adults. So I think all of those different characteristics that he had were what helped him to beat the odds and be successful at school, even without that outside support. And then another point from this article I wanted to touch on was about focus on and appreciate what skills you do have. So I think Oscar's teachers knew that he was super smart and capable of being successful in their classroom. Um, and although they wanted to push him and wanted him to be in as high as level courses as he could, I think that at the end of the day, putting him in those lower or grade level courses really allowed him to show off his knowledge and focus on what he can do. Um, and then this quote I grabbed from there, I think also pushes this all together, is that one system is diminished so that another system can be enhanced or preserved. So in this case, essentially his class was diminished. He went from the algebra to math eight and from earth science to science eight. Um, however, um, his school experience, his um, time at school was just enhanced through that. So I think although it might have been diminished, it was still a good thing. And then the last thing I want to look at is just the student as an individual. So one thing was about tracking the student. So I know in one of our last chapters in our textbook, it talked about how tracking can often discriminate against poor and ethnic minority students. I think Oscar fits both of those descriptions. So I think that is part of the reason why um, the school district wanted to keep him in algebra and earth science, even though he didn't meet the criteria to be in them. I think they knew he was capable and didn't want the fact that he was poor and an ethnic minority to be the reason that he had to get taken out. So they really pushed to try to keep him in there. Um, another thing we read about was about being a popular kid and the differences there are. Um, there was sociometric popularity and then the other one I think was perceived popularity. Um, I think Oscar was definitely a sociometric popular student. Um, this was defined in the textbook about um, not having popularity based off of status, but more having it based off of who you are as a person, being a nice person, being sociable, all of those things, which I definitely think describe Oscar very well. And I think this is important in this situation because um, while he was in those high level courses, he couldn't have those things that make him him. He couldn't be as social or be as goofy because he really had lowered confidence in those classes and just wasn't really himself. So again, this plan of taking him out of those high level courses really allowed him to um, go back to that um, popular kid in quotes who he really was the whole time. And then the last thing that I touched on earlier was about unstructured leisure time. 
So almost every day after school, Oscar had unstructured leisure time at the skate park, at friends' houses, all of those things. So I think if I was in the situation, it might be important to try to add in some structured leisure time, maybe reach out, see what he's interested in. Is there any clubs or sports he would want to try out for? Or is there a club that him and his friends could start just to kind of get some more school-based um, extracurricular structured leisure time in there? So yeah, there are my references that I used um, in my presentation. Thank you if you watched and listened to this, and I look forward to hearing back from you.